welcome to back to us. So we have yeah, here joining you. us. So, yes. The man who left us with the double whammy yesterday. We, That's we it. are going I, to I, be I, hearing I from the horse's mouth. Yeah, right. I, 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 I kept that <laughs> cliffhanger or those cliffhangers in my yeah, mind. The, the, the cliffhangers are in Jaws mm -hmm. and in Kaduna as well. You know, oh, I, yes. I said the other time that uh, when we started that some people in my uh, area, the, the voting continued into the wee hours of the night. Yeah. I'm just seeing a, a message now that at a, as at 4.07 a.m., someone posted in the group and said, if you are awake, come out. Counting is about to start. 4 a.m. No, that's lovely. That's just peachy. That's just peachy. <laughs> <laughs> that's just peachy. <laughs> that's just peachy. <laughs> Jenny, welcome. Um, um, we're seeing these horses again. Uh, yesterday, you pushed yeah. two of them onto the side, leaving us with one. Yes. And you said you weren't going to go further than that yesterday. So that was yesterday. Now today. So... Pick it up from where you left off. Yeah, and that was the white one. Yeah, we have the white one. Um, should we pick it up from where we left off, or should we pick it up from, sadly, the horses are back. Um, we expected that by now we will know which of these horses is, is leading. Uh, but you know what they say, right now in Nigeria, the only thing that is more scarce than the new Naira notes is the election <laughs> results. <laughs> oh, um, God. Indeed. We are such a wonderful people. Quick, quick to come up with, with, with <laughs> very, very, you. very uh, happy comparisons. <laughs> well, um, this morning, I'd like to share some stories with you. I'd like to start with the story of the last election results, which happened four years ago, where you had the candidate from the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, and you had the candidate of the APC. APC's um, Buhari was president, scored 15.1 million votes. Atiku, 11.2 million votes. In other words, the margin of lead was 3.9 million. The second story is what happened in 2007, Nigeria's most controversial election, when the PDP's Omar Riyaradua versus Buari as well in 2007 of the ANPP. Yaradua, 24 million votes versus Buari's 6 million votes. Buari was so far apart that the margin of um, lead in, was the highest we've ever had in the, the country's history. Over 18 million votes. Never have we had a presidential election where we would have the margin of lead as wide as what happened in 18 million. But again, 2007 regarded as one of the most controversial in our history. But perhaps the most important story is what happened in 1979, where you had... Ayo's favorite election. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Ayo's favorite election. Where you had Shagari of the NPN, we had Aolo of the UPN, and we had Zeke of the NPP. NPP. In that election, which was regarded as the closest race in our history, Shagari won that election over Awolo by a margin of less than one million votes. Never in our history has an election been that close. Still to date, it's still the closest in our history. 752,000 people decided that Shagari will be the winner. Margin of lead, 752,000. Why is this story important? It's because we find ourselves in a similar position as we did in 1979, Ladi. The difference is we are now a, rich, a, a nation that three things separate us. Three things will dis determine the outcome of this result. First is a lot of people are concerned about region of the president. So we are now looking at a race whereby region plays an important role a race where religion plays another important role, and a race where numbers will determine who wins. And perhaps this is what these three horses represent. The challenge is, today, never in our history, like I said yesterday, as a northern president handed over power to another northern president, and never as a southern president handed power to a southern president. 
But again, that is what the PDP and its candidates, Atiku Abubakar, represents. Mission impossible. Never in our history, like I shared yesterday, as we, have we had a Muslim president and a Muslim vice president. The fact shows that in today's Africa, today's 54 great African countries, there are only 15 that have this combination, Muslim presidents and Muslim vice. Cote d'Ivoire, Sudan, Somalia, Gambia, Mali, Mauritania, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Gambia, Algeria, Djibouti, and Egypt, and clearly Niger Republic, Libya, and Tunisia. But in all these 15 countries, they all have one thing in common that we don't have. They have significant Muslim majorities. Almost all these countries have a Muslim population that is almost twice their Christian population. They are Islam dominated countries. But again, Nigeria is not an Islam dominated country. But that is what the APC and its candidates seem to represent. Mission impossible. Above all, politics is a game of numbers. Nadi, this is the 10th time that Nigerians are going to the poll to vote for a president. 1979, 83, 93, 93. 99, 2003, 7, 2011, 15, 19, and then now. And in all 10 elections, in our history, never as a candidate from a minority region, never as a candidate from a region that has the least number of registered voters won an election. Let me make my case very clear. Based on the numbers from INEC, they've said this election is all about the numbers. Politics is a game of numbers. 21 million PVCs in the Northwest, 15 million PVCs in the Southwest, 14 million PVCs in the North Central, 13 million PVCs in the South South, 12 million PVCs in the Northeast, and in the Southeast, only 10 million. The Southeast and Peter Obi is what the candidates and this horse represents, the minority. And never in any of the presidential elections, and in all 10, have we seen that the minority candidate from a region that has the least number of registered voters, from a region that has the least number of PVCs, that candidate always loses. But again, that's what the Labour Party and its candidate, Peter Obi, seem to represent. Again, mission impossible. Ladi, how did we get here? I have but one question for all of Nigeria this morning. Which of these impossibilities is the most possible? Which of these situations, unique situations that has never happened in our history, never as a Northern candidate, a Northern president hand over power to a Northern candidate, never have we had a Muslim Muslim ticket. ticket? Never as a candidate from a region that has a minority number of votes win. Politics is a game of numbers. Politics is a game of religious sentiments. Politics is a game of regional sentiments. That is where we are today. The results will be tough. The results will be close. And there are other factors that might determine which of these horses will win. And hopefully, we'll keep sharing all these results. We'll look at the outlook. The outlook might not necessarily be in terms of history, might not necessarily tell us what will happen, because most of that history was between two parties. 
Now we have a situation where we have three parties. We look at how many new Nigerians compared to 2019 have PVCs. The facts from INEC shows that 14.4 million new people Got their PVCs. have gotten their PVCs compared to where we were in 2019. But again, where are these 14.4? Half of them up north. Which of these horses will win up north? 6.6 .6 million people, new people have collected their PVCs across the southern regions of Nigeria. Which of these horses will win in the south? There's a lot of time for us to look at all the permutations, but it really is going to be a complicated race. You are sincere. Jenny yeah. had us all just looking at Yes, the <laughs> omnis, you know, uh, I'm sure uh, our uh, viewers in, in spite of the prompts. Um, and now we have uh, soldiers. Set of, Another um, set of, uh, well, I wouldn't call it? these ones soldiers. Well, uh, well, they, so they do look uh, they're voters. different. Voters, <laughs> exactly. They're voters. They look like different levels of voters. So what's the story here? The, the story is, we're trying to find out how this election and we'll go, who are those that would influence the results, Ladi? And so we're trying to visualize those on the queue. Looking at the results, they're looking at the, the facts INEC has shared, whereby we, they say that 87 million people have picked up their PVCs. Looking at what they said in 2019, that 72 million people have picked up their PVCs, and trying to break this down for the viewers. 72 million in 2019, PVC holders. 2023, 87 million PVC holders. Now, the, what it means is there are going to be very familiar faces in each polling unit, or there were very familiar faces at the polling units yesterday. In simple terms, for every 10 PVC holders, eight had PVCs four years ago. So you most likely see a queue of 10 people Eight out of ten, on an average, were on the line in 2019. Again, eight out of ten were on an average on that line last year. So, yes, this election, we see a lot of familiar faces. We see two unfamiliar faces. And who are these unfamiliar faces? These unfamiliar faces are those that, yes, have collected their PVCs in the last four years. Majority of them are students. Majority of these two on the line are traders. Majority of them, fishermen and farmers. Because it's a three horse race, it is likely that the sentiments of these eight, though may remain unchanged, we might see some of them making decisions that they did not make four years ago. But what we are certainly sure of is that these two new voters that have joined the line for a three-man, three-horse race will be significant in the results that we'll get. Among the 14.4 million new PVC holders, 3.7 million are in the Northwest, 3 million in the North Central, another close to 3 million in the Southwest. So we are looking at an election where majority of the new card holders are located in three zones, the Northwest, the North Central, and the Southwest. And in Southwest, the big state we're looking at is Lagos. In the Northwest, the big state we're looking at is Kanu. In the North Central, the big state we're looking at is Plateau. So we're expecting the results of those new voters within those three states to significantly change the results. Will it be for the APC? Will it be for the PDP? Will these voters go the way of the Labour Party? Or will it be a surprising new horse from the NNPP? We're not sure, but again, like I said, the only thing that is more scarce than the new Naira notes <laughs> today the result. is the results. Well, you know, you in all of these, the analysis with the horses and uh, the voters. Are you deliberately leaving out the youth enthusiasm? Because I'm also expecting that you talk about 
how impactful the youths were in 1979, if at all, since you brought it in. Well, he did. I didn't bring it up. So, uh, and then the fact that in that population, the huge uh, revolution by young people is, is quite loud now. I don't know if we've ever had such an, an uprising, if I can use the term, by young people for an electoral process such as this in our, in our history. So um, right, let's start with the facts of 1979. Um, three horses in 1979, but there are two reasons why that election was close. Yes, the candidates were from different regions, three different big parties, but the total number of those that voted on election day in 1979, less than 15 million people. So two reasons, high competition, fewer voters affected the margins between Shil Shagari and Aulo. This time around, what we see is a lot of youths registered to vote, a lot of youths picked up their PVCs, but based on the feedback we are getting from our reporters, a lot of youths have also been frustrated. And so perhaps more than the voter turnout that we're saying will affect the election results for the youths, it could be the frustration turnout that will affect these results. And so INEC has released the number of registered voters. It has released the numbers of permanent voter card collected. What we expect INEC to also release from today is the number of people that were frustrated. And that's an example we've seen in Yanagua uh, comparing uh, what happened yesterday to those who are there present. Uh, and to probably vote, still waiting. Waiting to vote. But my question is for the new voters, um, you know, do we know how they will vote? For those who had the opportunity to vote, would they be looking at the other eight, their pattern of how they voted? How, in what way, what would interest them to really vote? To, in terms of the pattern? So, so for the new voters, the evidence shows that these new voters will be voting based on a couple of sentiments. Um, first is their social status. Second is their um, perception about the religion of the candidates. Second is also their perception about the economy, the state of affairs. So there are several factors that would influence. But what we know is, in most times, new voters do not follow the trends. They do not follow the trends. We have seen some opinion polls um, that favor, um, most of the polls seem to um, give it to a particular candidate. But again, the question is, are some of these polls authentic? Again, the most important poll is the poll that happened yesterday. INEC needs to start releasing the results to, to be able to improve the credibility of the process. The longer there's a delay, in the release of the, pro, of, the, of the results, the faster people have doubts about the accuracy of the results. Hmm. Which also begs yes, the question. That, 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 of course, that, uh, that, all that we are expecting to start in about an hour, just over an hour, because uh, no, just the Island Relations Center yeah, yeah. Uh, is supposed tonight. to open at mm. midday. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As, as Kelvin also reported, the Lagos Collation Center is expected to open the same midday. So probably as Professor uh, Yakubo is speaking in Abuja to open the national one, the 36 RECs will be speaking at the various states to open the state ones and then this uh, FCT REC will be doing the same. Right. So perhaps we won't have too long to wait. Yes, the 36 RECs will be doing their presentations, but there's one REC that I have my eyes on. Perhaps will be the most important REC. There's one rec that always accurately predicts the results of Nigeria's presidential election, Millicent. And that's a shipwreck. You said that, don't you? Okay. One rec has never gotten it wrong in all of Nigeria's election. There's one state that always predicts who wins the presidential election. In other words, whoever wins that state always wins the presidential election. There's no other state that has this capacity. In all of Nigeria's nine elections, one state is a state that has accurately predicted who will win. 
I know you're waiting for me to share that. You to yes. get to the state. Yes, already. <laughs> That's another, no, I don't think he's going to say it yet. Not yet. I just know not he's yet. not going to say just it yet. Just not yet. Okay. Not, but you need to can stay we, tuned. Can we just, can we just, uh, can we just. And I'm him. waiting for that red to come out. <laughs> 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 can we just vote Jide out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. no, thank, That's thank, a void. Thank, 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 uh, uh, I, I know that for people like Jide who, who crunch the numbers, who look at the patterns, who do the stats, uh, um, many of what we are discussing with guests and panelists and so on, they already have a very, very good idea uh, of, you know, those things. And um, this last cliffhanger is not just us who will be interested in knowing <laughs> that. Because if once they know that, and once we know that, are there. all eyes will be on that. And once that result is called, then people will go to town, uh, which is probably why Jide is still keeping it close. To his it's chest. Just... Only one of two things could happen with, with that state. Either the state would keep holding its title of having to be the only state to accurately predict Nigeria's presidential election, or history will be broken. Only one of these two things will happen. Which is, which is uh, this, it's similar to what happens in the U.S. I think is this Florida or which state was it? There, 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 there is a state indeed uh, it, that is that has that same quality status uh, in the um, U.S. elections, and they wait, they wait for that state. <laughs> but in this case, I'm going to I'll gonna, keep you waiting. <laughs> yes, uh, no, I'll Gide, keep you waiting. Gide, Gide is going to keep us waiting. Gide, I'll keep you waiting. We'll have to look at um, with some as as we go on. We'll have to look at the history of election results across all the regions. Yesterday we, we did the southeast. We still have to do the southwest, south south, and across all the three northern regions to look at that what have been the historical trends and what will the new voters do in those states. Uh, Gide, uh, what, do we do we have uh, any kind of uh, any any anything you're dropping before you take a break and then you come back and come and answer that question you dropped? Hopefully, we'll provide the answers. Um, the horses need to get some water, return to their <laughs> base for now. Um, but I mentioned them, um, youths. I think there are some places we should also let people know we're expecting results from housewives, women. And there are some states that have more female registered voters than male. So uh, I'm expecting results from Anambra, one of those states, Enugu, Ebonyi, Imo has more female registered voters than... Let me put you on pause at Imo because uh, Eitokwe Kutei is, in fact, in Imo with a situation report. Uh, let me use that opportunity. Thank you. Uh, Babaji, we'll, we'll, we'll expect you to join us a little bit later on.